black and white photography as we know it is where this beautiful medium with such a substantial amount of history began. Not to take away from the beauty of color, but in some cases, color can be extremely powerful and tends to complicate the shooting process. Shooting black and white allows a photographer to focus on other various key elements that help make up a good image, such as contrast, texture, lines, form, shapes, and so forth. This is great for photographers who are just starting out to really practice or even master, in my opinion, before even thinking about stepping into the world of color photography. This is so because it allows the photographer to focus more on the subject because without color, there are less distractions within the frame. With this being said, I'm now gonna jump into a couple different topics that I believe will benefit your black and white photography. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so the first topic we're gonna touch base on is simplicity. So shooting in black and white not only simplifies the shooting process, but can help add a sense of simplicity to your frame if done correctly. So in this case, with black and white photography, less is more. For example, so as you can see on the screen, there is a uh, black and white architectural photo that was taken by me. Um, so you can see there is just various gradients on the screen from the building. Um, now, what I want to touch base on is imagine this photograph um, if I was to step back like 20 feet to, in, uh, to include the foreground into the frame. So whether it be like the grass or the sidewalk, wh whatever it would have been within the situation. So if that was the case, it would have totally changed the feel of this photograph. Notice how I, in this photograph, I got up close and I only framed the building and part of the sky. So with this being done, it allows the viewer to pay attention to the details of the building. Um, now, if I was to step back, like I said before, and included the foreground, it would have not have been as easy for the viewer to have been drawn to the uh, details of the building itself. So if that was confusing, point being, simplicity with black and white really brings out the details within your subject. So when out shooting, just think about that, you know, whether it be you want to include a foreground or if you want to get up really close and just bring out the details within that subject. It really just all depends on the type of feeling and the type of story you're trying to tell. Okay, so the next topic we're going to touch base on is grain and how grain is good. So, to some people, grain is their worst nightmare. Hence, all of the low ISO film stocks out there all claiming to have the finest grain. Grain adds this texture to your black and white photos that just works so well. The texture gives the photo the illusion of physical touch on a truly non-abrasive surface. There's surprisingly a lot of good that comes from being accepting of grain, such as being able to shoot at higher ISOs, which then results in faster shutter speeds, which for me in tree photography is amazing for capturing motion to ensure that my subjects are not blurred and that they are completely frozen in frame. Once you become accepting of grain, I believe your eye as a photographer will grow to appreciate imperfections within your work. So-called imperfections don't have to be so negative because to some, those imperfections is what drew them to that specific piece of art. Now that you've come to terms that grain is good, you can now experiment with various cropping ratios in post-production. Okay, so aspect ratio one-to-one -one square aspect ratio to be exact. So square aspect ratio is, as it's stated, it's a square and that's how you frame your composition. It is even on all four sides as a square is, so it's fully symmetrical and the composition is a square. So when framing subjects, to me, I believe that it makes it easier to compose 
simplistic imagery because there is less information in the scene to once again distract the eye from the subject. So how do you achieve this square format look or one-to-one -one aspect ratio look? Um, it depends on the camera. So um, back in the old days when of film, you would, to be able to achieve the square format, you would have to purchase a six by six medium format camera. Um, the one of which that I use is my Yashica Mat 124G and of which it produces square format images. Now, if you're someone who shoots digital, a lot of digital cameras have the ability to change the aspect ratio in camera to one-to-one -one square. Um, so that when you're shooting, you can view it in a square aspect ratio. And then when you import it into your computer, um, sometimes, depending on your camera, you have to crop to square. Or within my camera, the Fujifilm X-T4, um, it just, it stays cropped um, once I upload it um, to my computer. Okay, so blacks and contrast. Within my personal black and white photography, the blacks and contrast are what I adjust the most in post-production. This is so because both of these elements, when used together effectively, allow me at least to produce imagery that I believe is dramatic, emotional, and has depth. So now I'm gonna show some examples on the screen to kind of have you guys better understand um, the importance of adjusting blacks and contrast to me uh, within my personal work and the effects that it can have on the viewer. All right guys, so in this last section, I am going to share with you some of my inspirations when it comes to my black and white photography work. I'm not really gonna say much. Um, I'm just gonna share their names and show some of their work uh, with you on the screen. Uh, but yeah, the first one we have is Mr. Zidwal Bazinski. I am definitely not saying that right. He is a Polish uh, photographer uh, slash more known as a painter. But yeah, here's some of his black and white photography uh, of which that uh, inspired me in my work. So the next guy we have on the screen is Mr. Tatsu Suzuki. Um, again, not probably not saying that right. Uh, he is a Japanese street photographer. Uh, again, uh, has a huge influence on my personal work. He is the king of like deep blacks and contrast within his work. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna share some of his uh, personal photographs with you guys now. All right, so the last inspiration of mine that I'm gonna be sharing with you is Mr. Moriyama, no, Moriyama Daido. Again, he is a, another Japanese street photographer and same thing as Mr. Suzuki, just really deep blacks, really intense feeling and overall just love his work. So here we go. All right guys, I just wanted to thank everyone for watching today's video. Um, before I end it, I wanted to kind of plug myself. So if you guys have seen in the videos, um, see me with this stranger logo on shirts, sometimes I pop it in the videos, in the outros. So um, this is, I guess, a little branding logo for me, myself. Um, it's something that I kind of started as a clothing brand uh, way back when as a young teen and kind of just turned into something that I just kind of
put on videos, put in like throw in like as like an accessory to my artwork. But anyways, here and there I make shirts and I actually got a reprint of shirts made um, and I just wanted to share that with you guys. So I got beautifully made, nice screen printed stranger shirts on some nice quality Hanes beefy tees, nice and thick. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, if you guys are interested, I'm gonna link below where you guys can purchase these. And yeah, also, if you guys feel free, um, I'm also gonna link down below my website. If you wanna check out some of my personal work, I have um, some galleries of mine listed to the website. If you guys wanna check it out, um, it would mean a lot to me. Um, so yeah, thanks again, everyone, for checking out the video. This is the first video of 2022. Um, hopefully, big things this year, I guess is what everybody says. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm just gonna end it here. So until next time, peace.